Sergeant Sadowski, please start your recording. PC recording has started. Cloud recording started. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing recessed from the Committee on Public Housing. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video for verification purposes. And to minimize disruptions, we ask everyone to please place electronic devices on silent or vibrate. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.nyc.gov. Again, that is testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you, Chair. We are ready to begin. This hearing is called to order. I am Alika Ampri Samuel, Chair of the Committee on Public Housing. This is a continuation of the committee's October 7th oversight hearing, which was titled An Update on NYCHA's Plan to Address Chronic Mold Conditions in NYCHA, which was recessed due to technical issues. Today, we will hear testimony from members of the public on the issue of mold in NYCHA developments. Thank you again for your patience and for taking the time to return today to present your testimony before this committee. I will now turn it over to committee counsel to go over some procedural items. Thank you. I'm Audrey Sun, counsel to the city council's committee on public housing. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you are called on to testify. When it is your turn, you will, <clears throat> you will receive a prompt to unmute and the sergeant at arms will set the timer and announce that you may begin. Each witness will have five minutes. I would now like to welcome Sergio Galvez to testify, followed by Getulio Cruz. Time starts now. Please unmute yourself. I apologize. Um, my name is Sergio Galvez. I am the community health worker, supervisor at LSA Family Health Services, a CBO in East Harlem. Thank you to Chairwoman Ampri Samuel, Council Member Torres, and the rest of the committee for giving us the opportunity to testify in favor of INT number 1911 to ensure all tenants are notified about the independent mold and leak ombudsperson. I have worked at LSA for five years, uh, visiting people in their homes who suffer from asthma that is made worse by housing conditions. Over the last two decades, my colleagues and I have inspected thousands of apartments. More than half of those apartments have been in NYCHA buildings. Um, I am also a leader with Metro IEF, uh, working with NYCHA residents and other leaders citywide. We help to push for repairs to hundreds of apartments and broader improvements. However, court appointed ombudsperson established through the bias versus NYCHA consent decree, Reverend Cruz um, will discuss this. Um, the court appointed independent ombudsperson, Cesar de Castro is supported by the independent court appointed mold and league ombuds called um, Ombudsperson Call Center or the OCC. The OCC opened um, in November of 2019 and since July, 2020, all NYCHA tenants can make their appeal to the Ombudsperson by contacting the OCC at 888-341-7152 or at um, ombnyc.com. If NYCHA does not promptly or adequately fix their mold or leak conditions, um, the OCC helps and pushes NYCHA to take effective action to identify the root cause of mold and leaks and to effectively remediate it. The ombudsperson even has authority to hire independent contractors at NYCHA's expense to make mold and leaks related repairs if necessary. While the ombudsperson has, hasn't yet had to take enforcement action, he and the OCC have made significant, significant uh, positive progress. 
while we in Metro I have won repairs in about 700 units across the city in seven years between um, November 1st, um, 2019 and October 15, 2020, the Ombuds person and the OCC has already had the following impacts in just a few months. They have been responding to resident complaints. As of October 15, according to the recent information by the OCC, the OCC has received mold and leak complaints for almost 4,000 residents. All mold and leak related problems have been resolved for 1,420 apartments. Some work has been done in 1,035 apartments. Most of the work has been done in 1,160 apartments. The ombuds person and the OCC have the authority of the federal court the access to all of NYCHA's uh, data related to mold and leaks and a direct line of communication with key staff to help push NYCHA to significantly improve conditions, identify NYCHA's operational pain points and other patterns in NYCHA's work that can be improved. Most importantly, the OCC models effective, effective communication with NYCHA tenants who finally have recourse if they are left waiting at home for workers who don't show up. Scores of tenants we work with have gotten real help from the ombuds person and the OCC. A leader from LSA who lives in Jefferson Houses has submitted testimony about their positive experience with the OCC. I'll also uh, share two other examples. A resident from Metro North houses experienced frequent leaks that severely damaged her bathroom and bedrooms. The first, the resident first reported the problem on January 2nd, 2019. She submitted, she submitted several complaints to NYCHA and housing court. NYCHA workers would fix the walls but fail to identify the source of the leak, causing the leak to keep coming back. Over a year later, on the 6th of February, 2020, the resident called the OCC to report the leaks and damages in her home. The OCC quickly got in touch with the management at Metro North and coordinated repairs I'm expired. Dates with the resident and even got NYCHA workers to show up um, when they missed the first appointment. As of yesterday, the resident happily reported no leaks had returned the OCC has worked so well that Metro IES attorneys plan to make a motion to the court to extend the OCC for at least another year and will work to ensure it continues as long as NYCHA needs to this outside oversight. Unfortunately, far too many tenants still are not aware of the ombuds person in the OCC. It's important that every tenant who suffers from mold and leak issues can benefit from their valuable oversight. This is why Metro IF strongly endorses Bill 1911. We thank Council Member Torres for writing this bill and to Council Members Ampri Samuels, Ayala and Gibson for supporting it. We are eager to work with the City Council to ensure it passes and it's properly implemented. Thank you. Thank you so much. I also want to just recognize my colleagues who are on um, Council Member Menchaca, Council Member Diaz and Council Member Jonai. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I would now like to welcome Gatulio Cruz to testify, followed by Michelle Holmes. Time starts now. Mr. Cruz, you're having a uh audio issues, we can't hear you. You might have to adjust your uh, volume settings. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, I apologize for that. Whatever you say, good afternoon. I am Reverend Gatulio Cruz Jr., pastor of Montesion Christian Church, located in the Lower East Side. Thank you to Chairwoman Ampri Samuel, Council Member Torres, and the rest of the committee for allowing us to testify. 
I'm here with Metro IF to discuss our efforts to hold NYCHA accountable to really fixing mold in general and to strongly endorse the city council member Torres bill to ensure everyone knows about the great services of the mold ombudsperson. New York City Metro IF is made up of Manhattan Together, uh, South Bronx churches, East Brooklyn congregations, and Queens Power, and is the largest network of faith-based institutions, schools, and community organizations leading our city forward for everyone. We connect people from within our diverse groups to act together to push for concrete improvements in their communities and beyond. Because tens of thousands of our members, including half of my congregation, lives in public housing, we have been working with tenant leaders for over 20 years to document problems, to fight for repairs and improvements. Because of NYCHA's continued neglect of asthma causing mold, we took them to federal court and in December 2013, forced them to sign a historic consent decree in Bias versus NYCHA that required them to fix almost all mold cases in 15 days or less. After four long years of continued breach, we and our legal team with the support of the 2016 appointed special master got them to sign a revised consent decree in 2018 that brought in strong independent oversight via an independent data analyst, an independent mold analyst and the mold ombudsperson. The important work done by the June 2019 court appointed data analyst IDA Neil Steinkamp and mold expert IMA Bill Southern demonstrated how much NYCHA was still falling short on fixing mold and leaks properly and identified specific things that NYCHA could do that would solve most mold and leak problems. The effective work of these independent experts has been instrumental in creating what progress has occurred. Further, as my colleague uh, discussed, Cesar de Castro, the independent mold ombudsperson has helped thousands of families get real repairs. Unfortunately, far too many tenants are still suffering from mold and leaks. Four of the most important steps NYCHA needs to take to address this crisis are as follows. Number one, replacing all roof fans. The Bias versus NYCHA revised consent decree requires NYCHA to fix or replace all non-functional roof fans by May of 2019. Unfortunately, most of the 65% of NYCHA units that depend on roof fans still do not have enough ventilation. After we and others kept pushing this in August of 2019, NYCHA finally agreed to replace all of the roughly 10,000 old belt driven fans with direct drive fans. In the HUD action plan, they committed to having this completed by June of 2021. Recently, NYCHA reported some positive news. Since 2018, they replaced 1,174 belt-driven fans with direct drive fans. If this is accurate, tenants living in buildings covered by those fans may be a big step closer to adequate ventilation, and NYCHA may have fewer fans to replace. Unfortunately, given past performance of belt-driven fans, there is no evidence from NYCHA that the 487 new belt-driven fans that were installed will not break as easily as those they replace. We share similar concerns with the roughly 1,111 roof fans NYCHA reports to have repaired over the same period. Since the last hearing, NYCHA said they have reached agreements with companies that can replace roof fans on a large scale. If this is accurate, it is progress. However, the work must actually begin immediately if NYCHA has any chance of completing its work by the deadline and preventing more tenants from suffering from asthma or other respiratory ailments. Overall, on the crucial subject of ventilation, NYCHA needs to completely disclose immediately to the public what work they have done and what they have left to do and when it will be completed. As important as this has always been, the added risk of COVID-19 has made it even more critical. Uh, the other three points, more mold remediation workers, resolving scheduling problems through the creation of resident coordinators and an automated scheduling system, and uh, a revised leak standard procedure. There is more to my testimony, but I wanna end with this. However, some real progress has continued over this period, particularly thousands of tenants who have contacted the independent mold and leak ombudsperson call center have seen real relief. Thank you. Thanks very much. I will now call Michelle Holmes. Time starts now.
Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Amprey Samuel uh, and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today regarding mold conditions in NYSHA. I'm going to read a little and then I'm going to look at the screen as well. My name is J. Michelle Holmes and I'm a resident of NYCHA Polo Grounds Towers. I've been a resident in a mold infested apartment uh, for over 26 years. I was downsized from a beautiful apartment that I inhabited as a child to an apartment that was already mold laden. However, uh, the critical part is the mold was just covered up with a paint job. And that's how it is in most apartments here. I'm also a member of We Act for Environmental Justice and together we are fighting for healthy housing in NYSHA. Uh, I'm testifying today in support of increasing efforts to address chronic mold conditions in NYSHA. This includes increasing transparency to tenants about how these issues are being addressed. Most importantly, we need action. We've been dealing with chronic mold conditions for decades, even though this issue is 100% uh, preventable. As I previously stated, in 1993, I downsized to an apartment that was covered in mold and the mold was simply painted over. NYSHA did not address the issue at all between 1993 and 2011. Though I had regular apartment inspections, it wasn't even written down. It wasn't noted at all. In 2011, or actually the end of 2010, I withheld my rent and I was dragged into court and I was threatened with eviction. After winning the case, uh, NYSHA went ahead, shafted myself, the judge, and thousands of other residents by simply wiping over the mold and painting again. My daughter, grandson, and I have asthma. At the time, my grandson lived here and we stayed in the emergency room. With WEAC's help, we were able to get our apartment partially remediated in 2015. However, the issue still exists because they just band-aided the problem. Mold has been a major public issue in health issue in NYCHA for decades. It affects residents and employees' health. Mold exacerbates respiratory and cardiovascular issues. It triggers asthma, a condition for which not only children of color, but adults are disproportionately affected. Asthma has major implications for the lifespan. Not only is it a direct threat to life and safety, but asthma attacks lead children to missing school and adults missing work. This impacts not only health, but also finances. Asthma attacks in New York City amount to over 100,000 missed days of school and work. And work. You can imagine this has a huge impact on the long-term success of our children. Now the policy for NYSHA to come in and address the mold, usually is the assistant superintendent comes and visits your apartment to tell you whether what you have is mold or not. Then the superintendent follows to discuss a solution, but they, in, in, in turn, they blame the resident for the mold issue. Then a contractor comes, suits up, covers his whole face, and then wipes something on the ceiling, lets it sit there for 30 minutes. Then they come back in and they paint over it. And that's it. That's what happens. And every time this happens, they tell you they're going to do a new, use a new procedure and it never happens. The resident is told if it comes back within six to nine months, put in a new ticket. 
Unfortunately, NYSHA remains Time its own expired. executive, judicial, and legislative body. It creates tickets, inspects, and closes the tickets and determines on its own what residents have. What we need today is, and, and I am at my wit's end as a resident of uh, public housing, what we just need is more strength. You as the city council are standing behind us. I beg of you to help us. No more asthma attacks should happen. I think at 59 years old, I don't look forward to dying before 60 because of another attack. And these attacks are getting worse. I implore you to have NYSHA no longer cover up but get in, fix and clean up and stop blaming the resident for what's going on. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. If there are any other members of the public we have not yet called on to testify, please use the Zoom raise hand function and we will hear from you now. Seeing none, we will now conclude public testimony for this hearing. As a reminder, the council will continue to accept written testimony up to 72 hours after today's hearing. Anyone who wishes to submit written testimony can send it to testimony at council.nyc.gov. I will now turn it back to Chair Amprey Samuel to close the hearing. Thank you, council. Um, I also want to recognize that we were joined by our majority leader, Lori Cumbo, as well. Um, um, as I, you know, just begin to um, end this hearing, I just want you to know, um, Ms. Holmes, that your story and the stories that we hear is, it breaks my heart. You know, I can hear the same story a thousand times a day in each and every time. It just is, is heart wrenching. And you should not have to go through this. No one, no one, no person in this country or in this world should have to live like that. And the purpose of these hearings is to hear your voice, to hear your testimony and to question the authority, to question the city agencies and put them on the spot to find out what are they doing? What is happening? And you know they come in and they testify and we hear the same excuses over and over and over about money, but we know there's money to fix. And so I thank you. I thank you, Mr. Cruz. Um, um, I thank everyone who testified, um, Mr. Galvez for, for just coming in today and letting us hear your voice. Um, but I have to say that Please keep doing what you're doing. Please continue to fight. Please continue to hold government accountable. Um, because like you said, Ms. Holmes, we're standing there and you're behind us, but, we, but you know, we're only as strong as the voices that we represent. And so please continue to fight so that we can go into City Hall and, and, and push that fight on your behalf um, because we're working really hard. Um, and I'm also thankful that we do have a federal monitor that is also listening and also doing what he's supposed to do. So with that, I wanna say thank you for, for coming back and you know, returning and again, apologize for the inconvenience and the technology um, from two weeks ago. And I also wanna thank um, committee staff for all of your hard work and dedication um, to the families of public housing. I wanna thank Audrey Sun, Jose Condi, Ricky Chawla, um, Terza Nasser, Sarah Gosselum, um, and all of the sergeant at arms that make this happen um, during every hearing and to Stephanie Allen and also my team and staff Everton Smith and Naomi Hopkins. Um, so this concludes the continued um, public housing hearing on the update of NYCHA's plan to address chronic mold conditions in NYCHA developments. Thank you so much everyone and have a safe and blessed day and rest of the year.
Uh, council members, just a reminder that the link for the one o'clock hearing is different from this one. This one is going to be closed down. If you are looking to go into the one o'clock hearing, the joint committee, please use the new link that was sent. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Thank you. Be safe. You as well.